Who will be the one to tame the legendary Mythosaur? Ever since it was revealed in Episode 2 that the Mythosaur previously thought extinct was alive and well, you can definitely expect some huge ramifications when it comes to determining who will be the future Mandalore. Not to mention, the entirety of the last two seasons and the few episodes we received in the Book of Boba Fett have all been leading up to this very moment. Not only are we told that the Mythosaur has a huge role in Mandalorian lore and culture, but it's also a part of a very old prophecy that foretells the coming of a new Mandalorian age. The songs of eons past foretold of the Mythosaur rising up to herald a new age of Mandalore. Sadly, it only exists in legends. And what's really big about this is that the prophecy of the Mythosaur is far older than that of the Darksaber. And so while the Darksaber does lend some credibility to its owner when it comes to the leadership of the Mandalorians, you can actually argue that the prophecy of the Mythosaur actually supersedes it. And so determining who will be the one to tame the Mythosaur is arguably a far more important question to answer than who deserves the Darksaber. Regardless, what we now have is two competing sources of legitimacy, especially when it comes to who will be the next Mandalore. And given that Din Djarin already has the Dark Saber, the question becomes who will be the one to lay claim to the Mythosaur? Well, I have a few people in mind, but the most obvious one has to be Mando himself. Already the wielder of the Dark Saber, it would only seem right that he would be the one to lay claim to the Mythosaur as well. Doing so would certainly lend a lot of credibility and solidify his position as the next Mandalore. That is, if he wants it in the first place. And I think that is precisely where Mando's problem is. Part of the reason why he has so much difficulty wielding the Dark Saber is simply because he outright rejects his responsibility of being a leader. It is somewhat symbolic of his character's struggle to embrace his greater destiny to lead the Mandalorians. And unless he is willing to accept his destiny to become the next Mandalore, there is actually a very slim chance that Mando would be the one to tame the Mythosaur, especially given that he would have no desire to seek it out in the first place, leaving the opportunity open to others. So unless he can overcome his hesitancy to embrace his greater destiny, it's unlikely that he'll try to claim the Mythosaur anytime soon. But then again, there has been some signs and moments of foreshadowing that Mando will tame the Mythosaur, most notably back in Season 1 when Mando was learning how to ride the Blurg. Your ancestors rode the great Mythosaur. Surely you can ride this young foal. So, it does seem like the story is shaping up for Mando to be the one to lay claim on the beast. But that being said, there are still some other serious contenders that should be considered. The next logical choice after Mando would have to be Bo-Katan herself. Based on episode 2 alone, it's pretty clear that she is more than proficient with the Dark Saber, indicating that she is more than willing to accept the role of leadership if given to her. And while that does stand in contrast to where we saw her earlier in the season, deflated and bitter, seemingly given up on any chance of reclaiming Mandalore, her witnessing the Mythosaur firsthand in the living waters may have reignited her belief. In fact, much of episode 2, while dedicated to Mando's redemption, was also about Bo-Katan reconfirming her faith in the Mandalorian way. And so, with her having bathed in the living waters and seemingly reclaimed her belief, she definitely makes a strong contender for taming the Mythosaur. In fact, Bo-Katan may see this as an alternative way to reclaim her position as the leader of the Mandalorians after having lost the Dark Saber. Back in episode 1, we learned that the reason why Bo-Katan looked so deflated and bitter was due to the fact that her forces have abandoned her. After failing to reclaim the Dark Saber from Moff Gideon at the end of season 2, Bo-Katan effectively lost all of her legitimacy and claim as leader of the Mandalorians. Not to mention, her inability to claim it back from Din Djarin very likely weakened her position as well. But what the Mythosaur now represents is another opportunity at a shot at the title. If bo is still seeking to be the next Mandalore, then taming the Mythosaur could very well do just that, and just might give her a stronger claim compared to the Dark Saber. In fact, she might not even need the Dark Saber if she has the Mythosaur. So bo certainly is a very strong contender. Some fans have actually compared Bo-Katan's first encounter with the Mythosaur to Boba Fett's first encounter with his Rancor. The idea that the beast attaches itself to whoever sees it first is a fascinating idea, and if proven true for the Mythosaur as well, could be a big opportunity for Bo-Katan to tame it. 
But besides bo there are other smaller names that could be serious challenges for the Mythosaur, that being the Armorer and Pax Vizsla. In the case of the Armorer, it would make sense as she would be interested in taming the Mythosaur, especially given that she already is the leader of the Children of the Watch, so she might very well try and seize the opportunity to ensure that the next Mandalore will stay true to the old ways. Pax Vizsla might also see this as an opportunity to seize power as well. Given his previous attempt to seize the Darksaber, it's pretty clear that he intended to reunite the Saber with his clan, and in the process becoming the leader of the Mandalorians. But while it remains unclear as to whether he wanted the Saber merely due to its history as a family heirloom or for something more, on the off chance that he does desire for greater power, the Mythosaur may provide him the means to do so if he can't beat the Njarin. But while each of these characters could have the right motivation to claim the Mythosaur, the means to do so is a big question. After all, it doesn't matter if you want to tame the Mythosaur if you don't have the ability to do it. And this by far is the biggest problem for all these characters. Characters. None of them have really shown the affinity or ability to do so, and given the sheer size and power of the Mythosaur, taming it will be no easy feat. In fact, the Armorer and Pax both have already struggled against a crocodile, so surely taming a Mythosaur would be a much harder feat. The same goes for Bo-Katan. While she is an adept fighter, she has yet to prove herself capable of taming a beast as massive as the Mythosaur. Just because she's able to knock off a few Alamites doesn't mean she'll be able to do the same against the Mythosaur. Din, on the other hand, has encountered beasts of a similar scale before, most notably the Crate Dragon and Tatooine back in Season 2 and the Crocodile in episode 1. But while he has been able to combat these beasts, he has for the most part just outright killed them. Which is a lot easier to do than taming a beast. And as for his taming skills, I'm pretty sure that taming a Blurg is significantly easier than taming a Mythosaur. But while these characters would find it very difficult to tame the Mythosaur, there is one character who just might stand a chance. And that one character would be none other than Grogu. Grogu. In fact, out of all the other characters, Grogu probably stands the best chance for doing so. Given that he is a Mandalorian foundling with the Force, he could very well use what he learned to establish a connection with the beast. In fact, we've already seen some of his abilities at work in the Book of Boba Fett, where Grogu managed to put a Rancor to sleep all by himself. And there are a few hints that this might come true, as we have been told and shown repeatedly that the future of the Mandalorians lies with its foundlings. The foundlings are the future. This is the way. And so, this could very well foretell Grogu's destiny to tame the Mythosaur and become the future Mandalore. The only problem is, well, he's a child and doesn't have a lot of motivation to try and lay claim to the Mandalorian throne. So, even if Grogu has the means to do so, it isn't strictly guaranteed as he doesn't really have the right motivation, at least not yet. But still, I really do think that Grogu probably has the best shot of taming the Mythosaur and just might be the one to do it. As as well, how this might happen, well, that remains to be seen. But I could totally envision a scenario where Grogu tames the Mythosaur and wields the Darksaber after being passed down by Mando, thereby fulfilling both prophecies and becoming the second Mandalorian Jedi. So that is all for this video, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. I am the Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.